Aygün Aygül Kerim Ray, a PhD in Science and Technology at Nazarbayev University and an expert reviewer of the UN Secretariat on Climate Change, as well as a postdoctoral student at Kaznu Al Farabi. And you will be talking about the structure of energy consumption and analysis based on survey of 12,000 households in Kazakhstan. So floor is yours, please. Um, thank you. Thanks. Thanks a lot um, for allowing me to share this presentation. Um, so basically, we did this research on uh, analysis of the um, energy consumption in the household sector uh, using survey of 12,000 households. Uh, I would start with the brief introduction, uh, why we chose household sector, um, climatic conditions of Kazakhstan, air pollution levels, and um, differences in the access to energy services and gas pipeline network. I will also uh, briefly outline the data that we used in our research, uh, methodology, and results. So why household sector? Um, this graph shows energy consumption in the household sector over 14 years. Uh, unfortunately, unfortunately, I don't have the latest data. Uh, so that's why it's the trend from 2000 to 2014, uh, because we uh, analyzed this information for our paper published in the Energy Efficiency Journal in 2017, and we don't have the later trends. Uh, but we, what we can see here is that um, the uh, energy consumption in the household sector is rapidly increasing. Uh, and the average annual growth rate was 6.3%. And uh, the household sector represented 27% of total energy consumption in Kazakhstan. Uh, also, it's not the, uh, the first um, in the ranking of the energy consumption sectors, industry uh, and other sectors uh, were also contributing a lot. But however, since this sector is growing rapidly, we can expect that in the future, um, this uh, residential sector will be one of the leading consuming sectors of energy. And currently in terms of energy structure, what we can see is that uh, Coal, ga natural gas, and district heating are major uh, energy resources used in the household sector. And the black color is coal. What we can observe from this graph is that absolute consumption of coal is increasing uh, over 14 years. Even though we would expect that uh, natural gas pipeline infrastructure is developing, Uh, and therefore coal consumption will be declining, but statistics shows that uh, levels of coal consumption is rise, raising. And another important issue to mention in the background is climatic condition and very high needs for heating because uh, heating is the basic needs for survival and average annual temperature was two degrees in the north and 13 degrees in the south, and there are uh, significant regional differences in the climatic conditions. Therefore, uh, heating season varies for more than six months during the year. So most of the time during the year, there is a need for heating in Kazakhstan. Uh, another issue important to mention is the air pollution levels, because uh, uh, this screenshot is the uh, air pollution levels today in Almaty. And uh, according to the um, AQCIN website, uh, current, uh, currently the level of air pollution in Almaty is hazardous levels, uh, which is uh, very dangerous for the sensitive groups of population. And in some countries, there will be recommendation uh, not to walk outside, not to go outside and stay at home. Uh, and uh, this, ki this kind of situation when the, uh, in the winter there, there are very high pollution levels is frequent in Almaty. And from the data that we have analyzed, 
test on air quality levels, we have observed that maximum levels of air pollution is observed in the winter times. And the difference between winter and summer times was several times for different pollutants, which means that uh, fuel consumption needed for heating is one of the important sources of air pollution in Almaty and in other cities of Kazakhstan. So what about uh, access to energy infrastructure and energy services? Uh, this graph shows the level of access of the uh, basic uh, fuels uh, across households, across urban and rural households in Kazakhstan. And we can observe that uh, there is a 100% electrification rate. So all households have access to electricity and there are significant difference in urban uh, rural households in terms of access to district heating. So majority of urban households has, have access to district heating and uh, near, nearly uh, zero access to district heating in rural households. And uh, in terms of pipeline access, also urban uh, households have higher access to gas than rural households. This uh, map shows the gas pipeline network. Um, and um, currently, uh, th there is access to gas pipeline network in the western and southern regions of Kazakhstan. And recently, uh, new Sararka gas pipeline was constructed, uh, which will connect uh, southern uh, regions to, to the northern regions of Kazakhstan. Uh, it means that in the future, in the near future, we would expect that um, households with, which have gas pipeline network will, um, there will be a higher share of households having gas pipeline network. And in this regard, there could be reduction of coal consumption by households when, uh, once households will receive access to uh, gas pipeline. And um, even though the Saraka gas pipeline will be constructed, some uh, regions of Kazakhstan may still uh, remain without access. This concerns Pavlodar region or East Kazakhstan region. Um, so the problem with the gas pipeline network is that um, in Kazakhstan, the population density is very low and there are large distances and therefore uh, there are high investment costs needed to construct gas pipelines. Um, having said that, uh, we wanted to understand what, what is the structure of energy consumption by households in Kazakhstan and what are the factors and determinants uh, uh, of uh, fuel choice in, among Kazakhstan households. So for, to study this, we obtained primary data from the household survey on living conditions and household budget survey, uh, which is conducted annually by Committee of Statistics of the Republic of Kazakhstan. Um, this survey was conducted uh, during 2011-2013 and um, our paper, um, which I currently, the main results of this paper I'm presenting currently in this presentation and you can uh, find it online in the local environment journal. I uh, included here in the slides, the web link to this paper. And if you want to have more information on the data and results, uh, you, can, you can check our paper in the local environment journal. Um, and important to mention that currently uh, we are analyzing the later uh, survey, it, which was conducted in 2018, uh, but we are still in process of uh, writing our paper. Um, that's, uh, that's why it's not, uh, the results are not yet available. Um, so, um, 12,000 households were surveyed, um, average number of households was 3.2 in, in, in one household, and uh, uh, there were some urban rural differences. Um, we also wanted to understand what is the um, 
what is the level of energy poverty in Kazakhstan? Uh, because currently in the uh, in the literature on environmental and energy sciences, uh, there is uh, uh, lots of discussion on um, how to measure energy poverty and what is the extent, uh, uh, what is the variability of energy poverty in different countries and areas of the world. And um, one, one aspect of the energy poverty is inability of household to afford basic needs in heating and electricity. Another uh, aspect is the uh, whether the household use clean and commercial fuel or it uses uh, dirty fuel. So what definition to apply in Kazakhstan? Maybe both definition can, can be used. So in our study, we, uh, we tried to use uh, three definitions of energy poverty. Uh, this is if the household spends more than 10% of it, its income to heat its home to an adequate standard of warmth, then this household uh, is determined as energy poor. Of course, this threshold is different uh, across different studies. Um, some, in some studies, 20% uh, uh, threshold is used, but the first definition of the energy poverty uh, mentions 10% threshold of uh, household income spent on, uh, on, on energy for heating. Another definition is low income, high cost. Uh, we, we filter uh, the household which have uh, uh, the general income of which is considered to be poor according to the country's uh, poverty standards and whether it's these households uh, which are considered to be poor, poor by its income, they also have high costs on, on the energy for heating. And the third definition is the lack of access to clean and commercial fuels. But in this case, uh, we used um, we we used as a proxy indicator of energy poverty if the household used coal and or firewood. Um, of course, uh, there, there are in some studies there are more comprehensive indicators of energy poverty, but uh, it depends on the data availability. Since we do, didn't have, uh, for example, data on the uh, arrears or energy efficiency of the building or uh, indoor temperature, that's why we couldn't apply uh, most of the indicators of energy poverty. Uh, so our indicators were predetermined by our data availability. So uh, we also, uh, so we, we just simplified the third definition by saying that those households which use coal and Firewood are automatically energy poor. So what we have found in terms of um, structure of energy consumption uh, is that um, the situation is much more complicated than we thought initially, uh, because uh, most of the household did not use one fuel, but they used combination of fuel. So what we can observe from this graph uh, from this map of the uh, share of energy consumption by household. Um, so this abbreviation CH means central heating, uh, FW is firewood. So um, in, the, in the Western region, most uh, popular combination of fuels was uh, natural gas and uh, natural, uh, natural gas and central heating, while in the in the southern areas, it was a mix of natural gas as well as uh, as well as central heating and natural gas. While in the northern and eastern Kazakhstan, um, there were also combination of coal, firewood, and LPG. Um, what was surprising is that we thought that households will use coal only. However, what we observed is that uh, households used two or three fuels um, at the same time. So it, they were using uh, coal and LPG and firewood or coal and LPG. Um, and uh, there were only few households which used only one fuel. And uh, most of the households use, used uh, central heating and gas, combination of central heating and gas, coal and LPG and firewood, coal and LPG, and um, other different combinations. 
Uh, so we aggregated our results to three regions because um, as we uh, discussed previously that due to the different access to gas infrastructure and central heating infrastructure, um, the fuel choice is determined by the location of the household. And uh, in the Western regions, uh, it was mostly combinations with, with natural gas. In the Southern regions, there is uh, access to gas pipeline infrastructure in, in most of the areas of Southern regions. However, we, we observed that uh, in some areas, for example, in Kazlarda region, South Kazakhstan, um, Almaty city, there were household uh, uh, which used, which continues to use coal, even though um, there was no, even though there was uh, access to gas pipeline uh, infrastructure. And in the northern and central Kazakhstan, in the northern and central Kazakhstan, um, uh, there, there, there were households which used central heating and coal and PG and firewood. Um, so in terms of fuel mix, uh, the situation looks like quite complicated um, and the different combination of fuels depending on the, on the regions. So what about results uh, with 10% uh, of income indicator? Uh, we have found that 28% of surveyed households spend more than 10% of their income on energy. Um, and uh, the graph on the left um, shows, shows that um, the graph on the left shows that uh, the number of households, share of households, uh, which was selected by 10% of, of income indicator. And what was uh, surprising is that actually most of the household with the 10% of the indicator uh, were, uh, also, mm, were also using coal. So those households which, which were using coal with different other fuels uh, mostly also struggle with the income poverty. So um, households in the North, Central and East Kazakhstan, except for North Sultan city, mainly suffer from lack of clean options, income poverty, longer and colder winters, as well as energy affordability. So this graph on the, on the, on the right shows uh, share households um, using, uh, are, which are energy poor with 10% of income indicator by regions of Kazakhstan. So most of them were located in rural areas and in the Northern and Central Kazakhstan. What about the um, third indicator, lack of, lack of access to clean fuels? Um, so uh, this graph shows on the on the x axis uh, share of households using coal by regions of Kazakhstan, and on the y axis uh, gross regional product per capita. It, it's interesting that uh, there are quite significant differences in in gross regional product uh, by regions. Uh, as an example, uh, the one the richest region is Atrao region with a GRP of 18,000 USD, uh, while um, while the most poor region was was uh, um, South Kazakhstan region, Almaty region, uh, Jambul regions, which with the 2,000 uh, US dollars of gross regional product. So the difference was by up to six times. Uh, on the uh, gross regional product. And we also made a similar uh, graph with the income levels and uh, there were a uh, pretty similar situation with the uh, income of households by regions. And uh, there, uh, in general, the Western regions which have uh, higher incomes, at this, uh, they are also using less number of uh, less households which use coal, while those regions which are generally income poor, like Almaty region, Xlarda region, South Kazakhstan regions, they tend to have higher number of households using coal. So uh, with with um, uh, with number of households using coal, uh, the the leading position was in Almaty region, 
even though there is a uh, generally access to gas pipeline infrastructure, the reason could be is that um, in Taltekurgan and in most of the um, villages, uh, small cities located in Almaty region, there is a, a not developed uh, district heating infra infrastructure. Um, in Taldekurgan, there, there are no uh, combined heating power plant. In this, um, in this case, uh, due to unavailability of uh, district heating, uh, most households tend to use coal. And in, uh, there are also differences in the gas price. In gas price are, is higher in the southern regions. Therefore, uh, households may not to choose may not choose natural gas because of the uh, of the price of natural gas. And uh, forty percent of surveyed households used coal. And 77% of rural households were using coal. Uh, it's important to mention, even though I don't have yet the results of the recent survey, uh, currently the share of uh, households using coal is 30%. So uh, there is a small decline of the number of households using coal, which is possibly due to um, development of the gas infrastructure. In terms of energy expenditure, we wanted to understand uh, what is the um, expenditures of, of the households on different views. And in the table two here, um, it shows the uh, energy expenditures uh, by different households. Uh, in USD per square meter of the surface area. Uh, it, interestingly, that uh, for the gas users, uh, energy expenditure was in average 13 USD per meter square, but for coal users, it was 15 USD per meter square. And in average, uh, coal users sp spend more on coal than gas users, which is um, surprising because uh, usually we, we think that um, uh, more clean fuel like gas will 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 cost more uh, than dirty fuel. However, the situation is quite different because uh, gas price is more regulated than coal price, and in general, coal price uh, were rising was rising with a more with a higher speed than gas price, uh, and there are also different. Uh, resellers and uh, transportation cost, which adds to the cost of coal. And in the regions which are located far from the coal mines, the coal price could be um, quite high, relatively high. And um, we compared uh, energy expenditures, uh, uh, energy expenditures by quarters and uh, between urban and rural households, and we have found that generally uh, rural households spend more on energy uh, than urban households. This could be because um, central heating price is, is, is not very high, is not relatively high in Kazakhstan. Um, in, this, in this regard, uh, rural households do not have access to district heating, um, and they have to spend more on coal and other fuels to heat their homes. And uh, we, in this figure 6a, uh, we compare the energy uh, number of households uh, by different views by, by uh, quarters of the year. And we found that uh, uh, usually households um, spend uh, uh, kind of uh, purchase their coal um, in, in the fourth quarter of the year. So it's uh, in, the, in the autumn season. And in general, electricity expenditures were rather flat uh, by quarters, it means, meaning that uh, possibly electricity is rarely used for heating purposes, uh, while like natural gas or coal is used for heating purposes. Uh, also, we have found that LPG was rather flat across the season, so LPG is rarely used for heating purposes as well. Um, so this was our generally first study on the uh, household energy consumption. That's why we don't have um, very much um, 
empirical analysis or kind of uh, complicated energy poverty uh, metrics uh, because of the data unavailability. Um, so this is mainly this descriptive uh, paper. And we have found that 40% of surveyed household used coal and most of them allocated in the most of the energy poor households were in the north central in this Kazakhstan um, and they are also an income poor and they suffer from the longer and colder winters and subsequently they have more problems with energy affordability 28% um, of surveyed households spend more than 10% of their income on energy um, Gas and district heating infrastructure coverage and income inequality across its regions contributed most to the energy poverty. Um, we have also discussed energy prices in our paper. Um, I guess I will not have, um, uh, my, I thought I will not have much time to discuss energy prices, um, but you can um, have a look at the paper and we um, presented some uh, analysis uh, uh, of the energy price in custom with other countries. And we have found that energy prices are relatively uh, low in Kazakhstan compared to other countries. And um, other studies indicate that energy prices are uh, regulated and indirectly subsidized. And removing energy subsidies alone may worsen energy affordability of households. Uh, offering direct subsidies to cover part of energy expenditures may not fully solve the problem, but um, Subsidies interventions for efficient technologies and fuels, dwelling energy efficiency improvements are necessary. Um, so uh, from the experience of other countries, um, how this problem of the energy poverty is solved is that there is a targeted uh, interventions and support programs for those energy poor households to uh, facilitate the energy transition from the dirty fuels to, to the cleaner options um, because um, of course, the uh, household coal combustion contributes to the uh, air pollution problem, to the climate change problem. And um, um, this leads to the additional healthcare expenditures and um, healthcare problems uh, in, in the country. Um, there are also many indirect impacts of the air pollution and climate change. And in this regard, to facilitate uh, uh, cleaner transition, there have to be some uh, specific policies and interventions. So this is pretty much discussed in our, in our paper. Thank you very much. Um, if you have any additional questions, you can email me. And uh, we have also Telegram uh, channel where we uh, share uh, in Russian languages interesting uh, papers on uh, related to air quality in Pakistan and in other countries. Thank you very much. Now I'm ready to answer your questions. Thank you so much, uh, Professor Kerem Rai uh, Aingul. Uh, it, it is a really wonderful presentation and a wonderful paper. One of the best seminars, I can say easily. We uh, much appreciate uh, the, this kind of uh, quantitative and very firm, robust analysis. Uh, you are always more than welcome to contribute to our uh, biannual journal called uh, Eurasian Research Journal. Uh, we are always uh, wide open for your uh, contributions to this uh, journal. Uh, it is a really great um, paper, I should say. And uh, is it um, freely accessible on the link you have shared in the beginning of the presentation? Is it accessible? Uh, I, I don't think uh, so, but... Um, um... Uh, if you send me a request in ResearchGate, I can share it with you. Perfect. Yes, uh, please. Uh, we will be reading it in more detail. I think uh, we have to absorb more. We need more time to uh, analyze. But still, uh, I think there are some questions uh, our colleagues can, may ask. Uh, I have some to begin with, if uh, everybody permits, of course. Uh, you have said 28% of the households in general this is a quite good sample actually 12000 really uh, fantastic uh, i think a stringent uh, methodology was followed by you and your team uh, so congratulations for this actually and 
uh, when compared to other countries of the region, how would you assess the uh, ratio, this uh, this proportion of 28%? I mean, for Kyrgyzstan, for Uzbekistan, or for Turkmenistan, do you have any such numbers? Because Kazakhstan is a uh, resource-rich country, as we know it. So uh, it is very important to uh, compare and contrast and maybe uh, de derive some analysis. Uh, I have no idea about what the percentage of uh, the case in Turkey, but probably uh, it is similar or even more. Uh, the heating is quite expensive in Turkey, especially in terms of natural gas. And a second question would be, uh, uh, did you, I probably missed it because I have received a, a phone call. Uh, so sorry about that if I have missed. Uh, do you include the electricity in terms of heating? Like the air condition in back, in, in your back, for example. Uh, it is, is it included or not? Or maybe I have missed the point. And the third question would be uh, this call, 40% of the households are using coal. Uh, is this coal totally domestic or are there any imported uh, sources of coal in Kazakhstan? Probably mostly domestic, I believe. And what is the quality of this coal in terms of pollution, if, in, uh, energy efficiency or uh, calorific uh, values, etc.? And the fourth final question, uh, sorry for uh, asking too many questions, but uh, what is the situation of heat insulation in buildings in Kazakhstan? I am wondering. I, I mean, if you have any uh, maybe superficial information or not, but it would be highly appreciated. Um, because, for example, in Turkey, it is uh, compulsory uh, from from a sing, uh, specified date, specified year, all buildings must be complying with the uh, insulation rules, uh, norms, uh, some kind of and uh, some kind of document is necessary for each um, completed building, uh, and I think insulation can make a huge difference in in Kazakhstan in terms of uh, heat uh, protection within the buildings, and also in summer times in the southern part of the country, of course. So uh, thank you again, and uh, floor is yours again. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Bakur, um, for your questions. Um, can, can I start from the latest one? <laughs> because I am... Uh, uh, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. the first question. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, it's... Um, actually, it's an important uh, issue to discuss, the energy efficiency in the buildings, because um, uh, currently, according to some studies conducted by uh, United Nations Development Program, uh, there are some assessments saying that buildings in Kazakhstan consume two, three times higher energy than buildings in Europe located in the northern parts. So it means that there are large um, inefficiencies in the building's level energy consumption. Um, and um, we compared the uh, wall insulation parameters of uh, Kazakhstan and in other countries. And what we have found is that um, it's, um, because most of the building stock is old, uh, they have uh, uh, heat losses through their building um, uh, uh, walls and roofs and uh, uh, other um, wall, uh, other building elements. And um, the heat insulation parameters were lower. But the problem is that I cannot say you currently with numbers because we don't have firm research based on uh, quantitative data because we need to have some um, statistics on each building. And uh, for each building, there should be some energy audit for which we can determine what is the energy losses in that building. Um, and we uh, recently government adopted uh, law on energy efficiency, energy saving, and for the new buildings, uh, they have to comply with uh, building energy efficiency standards. Uh, however, uh, there are some issues with the existing buildings because there are uh, insufficient programs and uh, stimulating measures to uh, improve energy efficiency in the existing 
existing buildings uh, because the household apartment owners they have to um, agree to uh, invest in these energy efficiency measures but it is very difficult or impossible uh, for the apartment owners to decide uh, and to collect those money to improve their energy so currently few energy efficiency uh, improvement um, projects are implemented in the existing buildings mostly demo projects um, which were which are funded by some united nations program or uh, government uh, programs um, and we don't have any uh, we don't have much strict uh, regulations on the existing buildings uh, may, um, I, may, I, may i ask a, a minor uh, like uh, is it is it so expensive for example in turkey for example i'm always uh, thinking in my mind um, even if you have a, a single house it is uh, almost essential to have an insulation of some kind because otherwise it will be too expensive for you to pay the uh, heating bills every month uh, so uh, it is a, an economic economic incentive uh, i mean people are thinking or perceiving like they are obliged to build their own installations uh, even if for the even for the uh, older buildings i mean uh, you said that it is very difficult for people to agree uh, it is also required in turkey to people to agree on uh, making such an investment but people come together very easily because otherwise they will pay a lot more than the insulation because it is very expensive in turkey in general the natural gas etc so what is the case in, in Kazakhstan? People think that it is okay, we can pay this. I mean, the, the monthly bills, heating bills, uh, insulation is too expensive, etc. Yeah, sorry about that again. Uh, yeah, actually, um, currently um, the situation with prices is that Currently, district heating prices are relatively low compared to Turkey uh, and even compared to Russia, compared to Ukraine, compared to Belarus, um, the, the price for district heating is uh, lower because we have um, our own coal resources, which are relatively cheap because our district heating is generated mainly from local coals. We are not importing uh, natural gas to produce district heating. Um, also, those households that use gas in the Western regions, they have also very low gas prices because the gas resources are local um, and the very low transportation cost for gas. Um, in this regard, um, the uh, NPV, net uh, present value and uh, payback period for energy efficiency measures would be uh, like 50 years, when we looked at the energy audit reports, we have found that what is the number of years in which these uh, investments and the energy efficiency will be returned. And it has shown that at the, at, at the, at the prices for that time, um, for fuels and for energy, the payback period for energy efficiency measures was more than 20 years, even in some cases, 50 years. In this regards, uh, building owners or apartment owners will not be willing to invest in these energy efficiency measures. Yes, so if I go to the second, uh, to your third question about the, um, what was the quality of coal, um, currently uh, in this household survey, we did not have a question um, what type of coal they use. This is general coal. That's why I cannot say you uh, with the firm data uh, where the, those co calls are came in, coming from. However, uh, in general, we have um, Ekebastus coal mines and Karaganda coal mines, Shubarkol coal mines, um, and usually the households use uh, coal from Karajara, uh, Shubarkol, um, Karaganda coal mines. Uh, this is um, not not the worst coal, coal quality which is used mainly in the power plants but the, not the best uh, coal, coal, coal quality so burning this coal will generate lots of hazardous compounds 
not only to the outdoor air, but also to the indoor air. Uh, and we also, in, at one point, we wanted to measure the indoor air quality in those households which use coal stove. Um, so we 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 are still planning to buy some um, uh, in uh, some um, equipment uh, to measure in different households using coal in inside their rooms what was the content of air pollutants. Um, just to show to, to to make some research study and to show to the policymakers and decision makers uh, about the health impacts of uh, household coal combustion. Um, I don't remember <laughs> uh, your first questions. It was what about the electricity city? I mean, uh, you have said that in rural areas and also in urban areas. 100% households are electrified, which is a, a fantastic achievement, I believe, in, in, in most of the developing countries, including Turkey also. Uh, this is very much to appreciate. Uh, do any households uh, use electricity? I mean, directly from the plug? Uh, yes, in, in all household survey, we uh, we didn't have such a question for which purposes you use certain fuel. Uh, we observed in from our survey that all households used electricity, but when we looked at uh, how much uh, electricity they used by different quarters of the year, we observed that most households use the same amount of electricity throughout the year. It means that most households do not use electricity for heating. Is there any specific reason for that? I mean, not using, not choosing electricity. Is it expensive compared to coal, for example? Uh, yes. Um, even though, um, even though, um, uh, even though uh, coal is uh, considered to be like more expensive in general, but elect uh, since we don't have data, how much elect those households used electricity for heating, I cannot compare directly electricity expenditure for heating with coal expenditure for heating because mostly these households which were using electricity, they would use this electricity for cooking, for um, appliances. Uh, so that's why I cannot, I don't have firm data on the, on the comparison of the electricity for heating, but I assume that why do not they choose electricity is that uh, because of the higher price, because, uh, uh, but in the end, if we account for the healthcare cost, it it may uh, become that electricity is cheaper uh, if we uh, compare the quality of life and the all other co-benefits of using electricity. And electricity is not very expensive. Again, uh, the same as district heating because electricity comes from coal. Uh, but uh, yes, electricity is not is rarely used by households, probably because of the culture and habits of the people. Um, it's very rare that a household will select a, a electric boiler uh, because probably gas boiler would be less expensive uh, at the end compared to the electricity use. And uh, in general, yeah, probably also rural households are, have also income poverty problem. And for, for them also, it's very important if, if they buy electricity boiler, again, it's, it's some expenditures to buy electricity boiler. Um, and, but at the, at the same time, one of our recommendations was actually to gradually ban coal use by household in the urban areas, at least, because um, urban households are generally wealthier and they can afford uh, to switch to electric boiler if they don't have gas uh, access. Um, so, uh, to, to resolve the air pollution problem in Almaty city, in Nur Sultan city, at some point we need to have some kind of uh, strict administrative uh, regulation because uh, household uh, behavior, it's difficult to, uh, uh, to manage and at some point uh, we, need, we need some strict regulation on that, but how currently environmental regulation uh, is uh, the, the, this household coal combustion is not covered by regulation, environmental regulation. 
it is allowed to, to burn coal uh, even nearby the school, nearby the hospital, everywhere, right? Uh, so it's, at some point there is a need to uh, resolve this issue. Uh, exactly. Thank you. Yeah. Your question, first question. Uh, thank you. I, I think all of my questions uh, have been answered. Actually, I was planning to ask which one is uh, economical, coal or gas. You have told it in your presentation already. Gas is uh, much more cheaper in terms of uh, everything concerned, transportation, logistics, etc. And also the environmental benefits, of course. Uh, so thank you so much. It was very uh, important and valuable comments. So from our colleagues, Please, uh, if you have an expert here, you may ask uh, questions. It's very intriguing subject, I think. Our institute, uh, for our institute, the energy is one of the most uh, notable subjects that we focus on generally. And uh, Kazakhstan being uh, the biggest country uh, in the region, it has important lessons, I think. It, it, it shows important lesson to derive from. Uh, very, very, yeah. Uh, and maybe one of the reasons why electricity is not very popular is uh, also related with the lack of uh, infrastructure. I mean, lack of some kind of a bandwidth, you know. For example, in, in Turkey, if you put something uh, more than 2,000, 3,000 watts, uh, it, you know, it can uh, it can make the uh, infrastructure uh, blow up completely. You know, uh, so maybe it is one of the cases also in in Kazakhstan as well. You cannot rely solely on the electricity. For example, you can put a, an electric electric radiator in every room of the house, but then it will not. Uh, it will not be, uh, you know, for the infrastructure to bear the, the load, the load of the equipment. Yes, this is also the case. Um, because uh, um, there is a, a peak power capacity, which uh, you know, should not be even further increased. Uh, because in the winter time, we have uh, peak electricity uh, consumptions. And, uh, and as far as I know, uh, in the low carbon strategies of many countries in Europe, um, th there, is, there is a clear plan that uh, electricity sh should be less used for heating. Uh, um, this, is not considered, uh, this is not considered a sustainable uh, way, way for heating. Uh, of course, first of all, we need to um, improve our en energy efficiency and uh, reduce our, our heating demand. Even applying some energy efficiency measures, we can reduce our uh, demand for heating in the buildings uh, by uh, by fifty percent. Uh, imagine that we can burn much less amount of fuel or uh, consume much less amount of energy for 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 our heating demand. And uh, interesting technology is this automatic heat supply station because currently uh, in in the in our homes. We cannot regulate amount of district heating that we consume uh, in our apartments, um, and uh, we we need to install these automatic heat regulation stations or uh, heat regu regulators in our uh, radiators, uh, so that we can switch off or we can regulate the amount of heat consumed in our buildings and homes. This is also one way. Uh, to to reduce our uh, heating consumption. That's right. We have only windows to open yeah. <laughs> to reduce the heat. Uh, we, we do not have thermostats uh, here. Yeah, it is one of the things I have recognized. I will. Спасибо большое за вашу презентацию. У меня есть два вопроса, которые бы я хотел вам задать. Первое, вот у нас образовалось Министерство экологии, есть ли какой-то документ или какая-то программа по улучшению экологической ситуации не только в Казахстане, но вот у нас главная экологическая проблема, это в Алматы, вот мы сегодня пост 
говорили, что практически все рестайные ситуации нужно объявлять, потому что ну, с, таки, с таким воздухом на улице выходить нельзя и дышать нельзя. Это первое. Потому что нужно много говорить, но пока нет закона, нет какого-то документа, то есть даже требовать как-то не получается, согласно этим, вот этим каким-то основополагающим государственным документам. Это первое. И второе. Считаете ли вы, что вот населению нужно предоставить какого-то рода возможность. Вот, допустим, когда я был в Италии, ну, тоже на стажировке, да, я видел, что вот старые дома, как у нас, которые с тонкими стенами, да, или по-разному, у них есть выбор, выбирать ли они электрическое отопление, либо газовое, то есть а у нас же население не может выбрать, у них нет такого права. Поэтому люди, даже живя в этажке, в благостроенных домах, снаружи утепляются пеноплексами или изнутри утепляются по-разному. То есть это огромные ресурсы тратится на то, чтобы отапливать эти дома, но вместо того, Возможно, есть какие-то способы э, провести газ в эти благоустройки, чтобы человек сам выбрал, какой вид отопления он выбирает. Допустим, отопление, если бы на кварплату смотреть, оно достаточно дорогое. Если человек купит оборудование, поставит либо электрическое, либо газовое оборудование, возможно, это ему даже будет дешевле. Потому что у нас в Талгаре до проведения газификации я топился всеми видами отопления. Дрова, уголь, жидкое топливо, сейчас газ да, до протяжении последних пяти лет. А вот сейчас у нас благоустроены дома, долгие годы топились буржуйками. И сейчас, когда их потупили, подключили центральное отопление, то есть котельное на 3-4 жилых вот этих благоустроенных домов. То есть пытаются решать этот вопрос, но... Дело в том, что даже люди, имеющие возможность подключиться к газу, они не пользуются, потому что они не могут подключиться, потому что это дорого. Само подключение точки, электрооборудование, прохождение всех нужных, получение всех нужных документов. То есть вот даже в том секторе, в котором я живу, в окружении, да, многие люди не подключили к газу. Хотя прошел достаточно большой срок, там больше пяти лет, но люди не имеют возможности купить оборудование, потому что оно достаточно дорого и в эксплуатации. Вот, допустим, каждые два года я чищу свой котел, там, меняя фильтры, то есть это тоже определенные затраты вызывает. И если возможно, можете, пожалуйста, ответить на эти вопросы. Ага, мне на русском отвечать? Или... Не, uh, на английском. English will be preferred. The answer for the answer. English will be preferred. Because uh, almost can understand English, I think. Yes. Um, currently, the Ministry of um, Environment Uh, protection, natural uh, and geological resources. Uh, um, they have uh, different strategies. They have uh, their own strategic plan for improvement of environmental situation. Um, and Almaty uh, municipality has adopted action plan for improvement of uh, air quality. And each region Uh, at the municipality level, they have to have their own uh, programs and action plans. Um, it's difficult for me to comment that action plan. For me, uh, those measures are not sufficient to uh, significantly improve uh, the situation. Uh, for example, in, in, in Almaty, um, some, most of the measures include Uh, measures in the transport sector and uh, only uh, only recently some uh, announcements were made that uh, two coal-fired power plants uh, will switch to uh, natural gas in in Almaty um, in the nearest uh, five to ten years uh, this is also this is of course the good news uh, for Almaty citizens However, um, I think that these measures are not sufficient uh, because there should be some measures related to household sector. And in the households, uh, switch to, from coal to gas, um, there are no specific programs for, for, for those households using coal to facilitate their transition or uh, to regulate uh, their uh, combustion or heating fuels. And at the, at the government level, there are some support measures for renewable energy sources. Um, however, at the same time, in, as we concern other cities, for example, uh, as far as it's that Alma, Almas is living in Almaty region, in Taldukurgan, right? So in Taldukurgan, um, I'm not sure which uh, action plan they adopted, uh, but uh, at the government level, I know that uh, uh, 
um, the, the, the household sector is generally un remained to be uncovered by environmental regulation. Um, so th there's, that's why um, there should be uh, some measures adopted. And in the Ministry of Environment, uh, they have also plans to adopt new environmental code which will have more strict environmental regulation to industrial emissions. Um, and I, I can say for half an hour about this environmental code, what is, uh, what is good, what is wrong. But I'm, I, I think that in currently we don't have much time to discuss this uh, new environmental code. Uh, in general, I would say that some improvements will be, but it will depend on the uh, enforcement and compliance monitoring at, at places um, because it's not uh, um, sufficient only to adopt the law there is a need to work on the implementation and compliance uh, uh, with this law especially as regards to environmental issues because uh, currently i think that uh, industrial associations in industrial power is much more significant than environmental lobby. Um, and uh, like the rights of the uh, people for the clean air uh, should be clearly, um, uh, there should be compliance with that right. And, and in this regard also population and uh, environmental activists should play a role in uh, controlling the governments to uh, over the compliance of the environmental regulation. And there are also problems with the air quality standards. Currently, air quality standards are outdated and uh, do not comply with the international air quality standards. And in this regard, there is also need to um, work on the strengthening and uh, um, making sure that this air environment air quality standards uh, will gradually transform to those used in other countries. Um, as regards to uh, as regards to your second question, um, if, if I understand correctly, the question is that maybe uh, households should uh, have their own choice. They have their own um, freedom to ch to choose the few they they want or, or disconnect from the district heating. Um, if I understand, if, if whether household uh, can can choose to disconnect from this heating and use uh, electricity or natural gas, right? Um, in in this regard, I would say that mm, from from what way, uh, from my knowledge and experience, it seems that district heating, in terms of environmental perspective, is more efficient than individual heating, because because in when we apply district heating, we have only one source. Uh, which we can regulate and which we can um, improve its uh, fuel combustion because com uh, burning coal at the power plant is more efficient than burning coal in the household. At the power plant, we have higher efficiency of burning and we can also apply uh, emission filters at the power plants. But if, if we have thousands of households using different fuels and we cannot regulate which uh, fuel they use and what is the efficiency of combustion, of course, th this will be generally low, right, in the households. And the stack, uh, uh, the, the stack where uh, the emissions occur is at the lower height compared to the industrial uh, power plant. That's why, uh, in general, uh, it is some uh, countries in Europe, they they uh, stimulate, they invest in the, in the district heating systems. Uh, so going from the individual system to the district heating system, um, it is considered to be uh, more efficient. And uh, uh, the, the same with the electricity. If, we, if the households use electricity for heating, and um, this is generally would also increase the electricity load, but electricity is generated from coal. Um, 
So this is also like a tricky issue in terms of what is more sustainable and efficient then. But in my opinion, uh, in Kazakhstan, we have quite good developed district heating infrastructure as a Soviet Union heritage. And in, uh, we need to uh, try to preserve and try to uh, update and modernize our district heating infrastructure um, to, uh, to satisfy heating demand, especially in our climatic condition, when we have uh, seven to uh, six months of the year of the heating period, uh, in this regard, um, district heating infrastructure is uh, quite a good option. And in other countries also, I have seen that there are new developments in the district heating infrastructure because they reduce their uh, heat supply temperature so that they improve energy efficiency in, in those systems. So there are quite technical details in how can we make our district heating system more efficient. Uh, but from the what what I have seen, for example, in heat roadmap for Europe until 2015, we have a quite strategy that in urban areas they will develop district heating, in rural areas they will try to uh, develop some renewable sources or heat pumps, where in those areas which with with low population density they will try to develop some individual. Um, renewable heating systems. But in urban areas, they, uh, in dense populations, they recommend district heating. OK, thank you for this uh, very detailed uh, answer. Uh, any comments, questions? I'd like to just ask something, may I? Uh, yeah, uh, thank you for the presentation, Yeah, uh, It was very interesting. Yeah, I wonder why uh, didn't you use um, joules or petajoules uh, in order to measure the amount of energy used by households in Kazakhstan? Because it's, it would be very helpful, I think, um, sort of uh, to draw the baseline for ultimate amount of energy consumed by the households because your graphs are um, uh, your, your graphs show diff, uh, energy in different forms, the like coal, gas, oil, etc. But the petajoules would be, um, I think, uh, um, easier to understand uh, what amount of energy uh, uh, households in Kazakhstan use. Thank you Did you hear? <laughs> Thank you very much, Kanat. Um, from uh, in in my second slide, where I have presented the residential energy consumption, um, the unit is kilotons of oil equivalent. Uh, so this is the energy units. Uh, but in the household survey, uh, this is the household budget survey. We don't we don't have their uh, kilowatt hours or tons of use. We have only ten gear. Uh, amount of money spent on different fuels. Okay. Yeah, that's um, <laughs> that's a pity because uh, um, tenge is uh, is not stable. It depreciates from time to time, and that's uh, inaccurate. I would say. Yeah, I, I would also uh, like to ask. Um, uh, what's uh, what's the data is like? Um, is it is it monthly data? Uh, that you have collected, like uh, months of uh, heating period, December, January, February, etc., or it is uh, combined data for heating period in, in Kazakhstan. Uh, I wonder if, uh, yeah, you could use this data for uh, another purposes, like um, what's the strategy of uh, households in Kazakhstan in coping with uh, extreme weather conditions. Uh, uh, for example, I, um, I remember um, the winter in uh, 2011 in southern Kazakhstan was extremely cold. There was a very unusual uh, cold wave hitting the southern Kazakhstan. And um, I saw back then people uh, switching to different strategies of heating. Normally, people would use gas or coal. And for, sh for a short amount of time, 
people bought some additional um, appliances, electric, uh, electric heaters, et cetera. Uh, well, I think um, if the data is uh, detailed, uh, it will be very helpful to understand the, uh, this, uh, this sort of uh, questions, I think. Thank you very much, Pranat, for your question. Um, yes, indeed, uh, looking at the monthly uh, variations would be very interesting, um, especially with, with very significant climatic variations between the months in Kazakhstan. Um, in, in our survey, uh, this is called uh, Household Quarterly Budget Survey. So uh, in, this is conducted by Stats Office uh, of Kazakhstan, and we don't have any influence on the survey questionnaire design. Um, and we, we used quarterly uh, data on how much they spent on their energy and fuels. Well, thank, thank you. you. Thank you so much for both questions and answers. Any further comments and questions? Uh, if there is no, I want to once again, thank you for this uh, really great presentation and really great paper. Uh, we will be sending you a request, a request for through ResearchGate to get the uh, full paper and Again, thanks uh, for uh, thanks Almas for uh, making this possible, uh, introducing you to our group. Uh, so we will be uh, delighted uh, to receive your further studies to our journals uh, and also to uh, our other publications such as books. Also, uh, uh, you may come come up with an idea about the about a book, we can uh, always uh, publish these kind of uh, interesting and really uh, valuable books. So thanks again for joining us today. Thank you, Dr. Vakur. Thank you, uh, Almas. Okay, so uh, until next time, until the next seminar, which will be held in uh, 7th of December, or, or, or was it 7th of December? Or 10th, 10th of December, yeah, 10th of December. Uh, we want to say goodbye and uh, have a great uh, end of the week and uh, see you next time. Thanks and bye-bye. Bye-bye. Thank you.